Tonight we're going to talk about the third story in the Best American Short Stories collection, uh, 2017 edition as edited by Meg Walzer. And this is God's Work by Kevin Canty. Stick around to see my thoughts on this short story. Hey y'all. It's Jen, and welcome to my channel, Ifers Inklings. And um, this is the third installment of my short story collections. Um, and I'm going through the Best American Short Stories 2017 edition as edited by Meg Walter. That brings us to the story, God's Work by Kevin Canty. Um, and this is from The New Yorker. So in this story, Sander is our narrator. Um, and... His mother is very religious. She is taking him door to door to spread the word of God to their neighbors and save their community. Um, and in this, Sanders is a junior in high school, um, very conflicted about how he feels about himself and about God and his religious stance. And one of the doors that they knock on and get to talk to the person or is invited in to talk is one of his classmates who is being raised by her father and um, they are obviously atheist. Clara is the daughter of the atheist father and she is described as being who, someone who dresses like their parents don't care and that they can do whatever they want. And ultimately, after this encounter, she does decide to go and visit the church. And um, her and Sanders get a, a little bit closer. And there's some of that sexual conflict or tension there. And, of course, Sanders feels guilty about this. Because he's bad and he's full of sin and why can't he just be good? But through the story you can kind of see that Sanders is is almost embarrassed of his mother and we get this line. But he doesn't want to go there in his new suit with his haircut and he doesn't want to go with his mother. And I don't know, is, that, is he embarrassed of her? Is he embarrassed of God? What is the conflict there? But on the same token... Clara seems to be embarrassed of her father. And we get the, this line from her. Clara's trying to rush Anna and Sanders out the door. And he says, I'm sorry, Clara says to Anna. He gets like this. You should go. You know, is that her being embarrassed of her dad, who is the sinner? We've got that conflict of the good and the bad there. You know, it's two extremes, and the kids are kind of stuck in the middle. But in this, Sanders always points out the way that the girls dress and um, how they're sinful and how they're leading him to sin and we get this um, quote at first breath uh, at the first breath of spring the girls all started to dress like prostitutes with his own eyes he has seen a pretty junior bicycling in a tank top with one pale breast riding free in his dreams he sees the delicate tuft of blonde pubic hair he witnessed poking out of a pair of low slung jeans in study hall this is what Sanders thinks about as he walks behind his mother, feeling the hot sun wherever it touches the black fabric of his suit. We get that throughout the story of all of this about how it's the woman's, the girl's fault that Sanders is reacting to them in a sexual way. And I just don't understand why sexuality always has to be, one, the woman's fault, and two, why it's a bad thing for women to be sexual creatures. Why can't women dress the way they want to? We humans are sexual creatures. And why is it bad when a woman wants to show that she is a sexual creature? There is one good line in here where Clara is asking why it's bad to enjoy yourself. She says, I get it, she says. You're not supposed to enjoy yourself or something, but I don't understand why. God wants other things for me, he says. You can't have both? Later on, she goes to say, there's nothing wrong with pleasure. And I agree with that. Why is it that to be religious, you have to also not have any pleasure in your life? I, I don't understand. 
but that is really all that there is to this little short story to me it really doesn't feel like a complete story um, and that was where I kind of got frustrated with it it was 17 pages long but there nothing seemed to wrap itself up Sanders was a typical teenage boy you know witnessing sexuality with the girls and his own sexuality and his own desires and noticing or thinking about girls being naked under their clothes you know hey they've got tits under there and and then feeling shamed because he had those thoughts which again they're natural normal thoughts that have that a, a boy is going to have when he's this age range a teenage boys teenage boys think about sex teenage girls think about sex it happens it's natural and this story was just full of shaming women for dressing provocatively and boys for thinking sexual thoughts that's it that's all i have on this i didn't enjoy that story it really kind of irritated me because it, like i said why can't we have it both ways why do you have to be in order to be good do you have to deny yourself all the pleasures of the world why does it always have to be the woman's fault that a man has sexual feelings towards when he looks at her anyway that's it um i didn't enjoy this story i wouldn't recommend it um i'm hoping some of these other ones are a little bit better as i go through this next week's story is a small sacrifice for an enormous happiness by jay chakrabarty i don't know how to say that um i have read it and you will i'll do a review on that next weekend um or it may be i may skip a weekend because i'll actually be out of town next weekend i don't know if i'll get a video up or not so that's it for this review if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue on with this let me know in the comments below be sure and hit that like button if you did enjoy this that helps me know that um you're watching it and that you enjoyed this review and for me to continue on also uh, if you're not already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button i try and post content at least three or four times a week i'm better at it some weeks than others as always until next time bye